Assalamu alaikum dear students hope everything is fine with you and your families in continuation with the retina i'm going to discuss another uh, topic today that is ocular investigations which are basically performed to diagnose the retinal pathologies Uh, the most commonly performed ocular uh, orbital investigations are fundus fluorescent angiography, optical coherence tomography, and B scan ultrasonography. Uh, fundus fluorescent angiography is basically photographic uh, surveillance of choroidal and retinal circulations. Uh, it is performed to diagnose various uh vascular pathologies like diabetic retinopathy vein occlusions arterial occlusions uh, in cases of uh, neoplastic lesions uh, in cases of inflammatory lesions involving the posterior segment uh, there are uh, two uh, type of uh, blood uh, retinal barriers one is uh, outer blood retinal barrier and uh, that is uh, provided by the tight junctions between the retinal pigment epithelial cells by zonula occludentis and other one is the inner blood retinal barrier that is provided by the tight junctions between the capillary endothelial cell endothelial cells the basement membrane and uh, the pericytes they play a minor role uh, in cases uh, in in providing the inner blood retinal barrier this is actually uh, the endothelial cell uh, uh, in the vessels uh, vascular lumen and these are the endothelial cell and this is actually uh, fluorescent dye which is uh, within the uh, within the vascular lumen so if the endothelial uh, uh, tight junctions are intact this dye remain mainly vascular but when this uh, junction is disrupted or this tight junctions are disrupted the dye leaks out of the blood vessels so what is actually fluorescence fluorescence is emission of light of longer wavelength uh, by certain molecules when these molecules are stimulated by light of uh, shorter wavelength uh, see here uh, these molecules are basically excited by blue light which has got a wavelength of 490 micron and the emitted uh, light is uh, uh, yellow green which has got a wavelength of 530 micron there are two type of fluorescence one is hyperfluorescence and the other one is hypofluorescence this we will discuss uh, later on some of the lesions uh, they cause hyperfluorescence and some of the lesions they cause hypofluorescence this is the technique by which we do the fundus fluorescent angiography we use a camera with a light source a white light which is then uh, split by this uh, excitation filter which allows only blue light of 490 uh, micron to go into the eye and when this light comes back it blocks uh, the blue light and allow the light of longer wavelength which is yellow uh, light uh, that is about 530 micron to come back onto the camera to make the image so basically there are two type of filters built-in filters in this fundus, fundus camera this is the picture of normal angiogram <coughs> which has got different phases the first one is the choroidal phase see this is the dye uh, this is uh, fluorescent provided uh, by the fluorescent dye this is basically choroidal see we, we cannot see any any dye filling the arteries and the veins on the retinal surface after that there is uh, arterial phase this one is uh, 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 this is one is the arterial phase here you see the arteries are uh, fi filled now okay and uh, this comes uh, one second after the 
choroidal phase. Choroidal phase usually comes uh, after 10 seconds after injections. So the arterial phase comes one second after the uh, choroidal phase. Then there is uh, arteriovenous phase. See here, this is the veins are now going to be filled slowly. So now this is also known as capillary phase. The arteriovenous phase means the dye coming into the arteries now going into the vein passing through the capillaries then there comes the venous phase okay this one so see now all the arteries are filled and the veins are also filled now and this first pass of the dye is completed within 30 seconds and uh, it takes about 10 minutes to uh, uh, for the to the dye to leave the eye uh, in different recirculation phases okay so after 10 minutes the whole of the dye leave the eye so this is the uh, normal angiogram see we can see the choroidal fluorescence here and uh, we can see the filling of the arteries here we can see the filling of the arteries and early filling of the veins here and here all the arteries and the veins are filled and in the late phase we see there is a decrease in the choroidal fluorescence and also the dye uh, fluorescence in the veins also but here we can see the late staining of the disc this is one of the characteristic feature of normal angiogram why we see that uh, in the previous picture also the macula is uh, dark in cases of uh, uh, if you do the fundus fluorescent angiography because there is absence absence of the blood vessels uh, uh, here in uh, because this is foveal a vascular zone and there is uh, presence of uh, xanthophyll pigment okay at the level of the fovea this is fovea and here we see there is a lot of xanthophyll pigment so it will obstruct any fluorescence coming from the choroid and because there is a, a large size retinal pigment epithelial cells which contain melanin and lipofusin so that is the reason see all the retina is giving hyperfluorescence but here there is dark appearance there is no fluorescence uh, neither neither hyper or hypofluorescence this is dark appearance now what are the causes of hyperfluorescence uh, hyperfluorescence uh, can be, be uh, because of the autofluorescence this autofluorescence means the picture taken before dye injections so some of the ocular uh, uh, structures they give rise to hyperfluorescence they are auto they are hypofluorescent and so if we do take a picture before dye injection they are they are they give they are hyperfluorescent because of their autofluorescence they they are basically this is because of the autofluorescence they give they are hyperfluorescent before even the dye injections the other causes are uh, retinal pigment epithelial uh, window defect and uh, the pooling leakage and staining so one synonym is is this uh, a pls okay a pls account uh, rpa window defect for a pls means uh, pooling leakage and staining this is uh, rp window defect see here the atrophy of the rpe cells okay but that is giving rise to this hyperfluorescence and this hyperfluorescence actually uh, we see in the early phases of the retinal angiogram and this remains the same the fluorescence remains the same and the this uh, size of the fluorescent area also remains the same okay and with uh, you know by the time by late angiogram this fluorescence uh, the size remains the same but fluorescence uh, reduces in intensity in late phases if you take the picture after 10 10 minutes in recirculation phases this actually fades out but during the normal angiogram this remains the same this is because of the atrophy of the retinal pigment epithelial cells which shows then uh, the choroidal fluorescence okay the second one is the pooling by disruption of the outer blood retinal barrier. 
सो पुलिंग इज ऑलवेज बाई डिस्क्रप्शन ऑफ द आउटर ब्लड रेटिनल बैरियर विच इज प्रोवाइडेड बाई द टाइट जंक्शन बिटवीन द रेटिनल पिगमेंट एपिथीरियल सेल्स दिस फ्लोरसेंट डाई इज एक्चुअली सेवेंटी परसेंट बाउंड विद द ब्लड प्रोटीन्स एंड द नॉर्मल क्रॉयडल वेसल्स दे आर नॉट लीकी सो द मेन द डाई रिमेन्स विद इन द लार्ज साइज क्रॉयडल वेसल्स बट बाई द टाइम दे रीच दिस डाई रीच इन द स्मॉलर वेसल्स दिस इज कोरियो कैपिलरस दीज आर लीकी सो द अनबाउंड डाई विच इज नॉट adherent to the the uh, blood proteins that leaks out and and pass uh, through the Brooks membrane and if uh, this outer blood retinal barrier is disrupted it collects under the subretinal surface okay uh, under the subretinal surface or under the retinal pigment epithelial cells so pooling is basically by the disruption of the outer blood retinal barrier and here if you see uh, the dye the you know the fluorescence increases with the passage of the time but uh, the area of uh, fluorescence that remains the same suppose if here is uh, pigment epithelium detachment so dye will collect under uh, that area of detachment but uh, it will fluoresce uh, its fluorescence will increase with the passage of the time but the area remains the same okay area will not increase here is uh, gradually increasing uh, pooling uh, but its uh, area will remains the same by the end of the angiogram then there is leakage that is caused by disru disruption of the inner uh, bl blood retinal barrier so when the dye comes uh, into the Uh, retinal blood vessels and if the inner blood retinal barrier that is the tight junctions between the epithelial cells are disrupted so this dye leaks out here see the dye actually not only uh, increases in fluorescence but increase increasing in the area also so here uh, is it it's a it's small beginning then gradually it spreads out all the dye is coming everywhere see here is a small leakage then this dye is spreading out uh, so there is uh, not only increase in the fluorescence but also increase in the size of the fluorescence the area is also increased while in cases of uh, disruption of the outer blood retinal barrier there is only increase in the fluorescence see this one uh, this is the area of the fluorescence but the area remains the same here fluorescence increase also and the area also increases also then this is staining as i told you earlier there are three causes of uh, four causes of uh, hyperfluorescence the last one is the staining which is uh, actually which actually comes by the late phase which we see in the late phases of the angiogram this is because of a drusens if there is any drusen or any fibrous tissue any explo exposed sclera or we see here it stains the normal disc also so staining uh, have is done by these four type of uh, lesions or even by the normal disc then what are the causes of hypofluorescence hypofluorescence is because of the masking of the retinal fluorescence masking of the crodal fluorescence and if there are filling defects see this is the masking of the retinal fluorescence this is pre retinal blood and you see we cannot see in this area in fundus fluorescence angiography the filled retinal blood vessels even it blocks the crodal fluorescence also okay so there is masking of the crodal fluorescence because of the blood on pre retinal blood so this will cause hypofluorescence we see this fundus photo photograph and then we do the fundus fluorescence angiography and we see this block fluorescence okay the masking of the crodal fluorescence the second one is the masking of the crodal fluorescence this can be because of the intra retinal hemorrhage or uh, sub retinal pigment epithelium blood 
are there in the other causes congenital hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium so anything uh, beyond the retina if there is hemorrhage or any uh, pigmentary lesions or uh, any exudate that will also cause reduction into the uh, choroidal fluorescence okay so this is how we diagnose the different lesions that different lesions cause different kinds of fluorescent pattern hyperfluorescence or hypofluorescence this is the filling defect uh, which uh, are caused by the vascular lesions uh, by loss of the vascular bed okay the filling defect can be because of the vascular occlusion like in cases of uh, central retinal vein occlusion or central retinal artery occlusion or by loss of vascular bed actually there is no vessels so this is uh, in cases of degenerative my myopia and in cases of choroidremia uh, like in case uh, this vascular uh, filling defect by vascular occlusion like in cases of uh, uh, diabetic retinopathy uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy which leads to significant ischemia so vessels are occluded so dye does not go into these vessels here we see the vessels are filled actually but here we cannot see any uh, vascular filling here actually there is no blood vessels so only the vessels are filled uh, which are there which are present second investigation which we do uh, to diagnose uh, different ocular pathology is optical coherence uh, tomography and this is actually non contact non invasive invasive imaging system uh, it provides uh, high resolution images of the posterior segment and nowadays uh, we can also do actually interior segment uh, uh, Op OCT also, optical coherence tomography also. It uh, uses light uh, instead of sound. It uses light in this machine. Actually, uses light to to take these pictures instead of sound, which is uh, which we used in cases of ultrasonography. And this is uh, the normal uh, picture of uh, OCT, and uh, which depicts different. layers of the retina there are certain uh, layers which are hyper reflective and which are certain layer which are hypo reflective like this retinal pigment epithelium is you see this red line this is more hyper reflective and uh, the central uh, lesions of uh, layer of the retina they are not uh, very much reflective though so they are hypo reflective here see even the fiber layer this is also hyper reflective so certain layers are hyper reflective and certain layer are hypo reflective these are the different layers and this is uh, interior segment oct which actually shows the angle of the interior chamber and which also with by the help of this oct we can measure the uh, corneal thickness also this is the cornea this is interior chamber this is iris and we can see the angle of the interior chamber with the help of this ocular coherence tomography this is what are the indications now for uh, doing this oct uh, oct actually we do in cases of uh, macular lesions like macular edema age related macular degenerations macular hole central serous chorea retinopathy epiretinal membrane formation and vitreo macular traction see this is the oct here we see this there is some retinal edema so this is also giving some red area here this is the thickness map so we see here this red area goes with this something more than 480 micron so normal thickness is about 250 micron here but if it is increased uh, beyond 250 we see this is edema here we can see the oct picture also see there is loss of foveal contour and you can see the edema into the retina okay this is uh, then numerical measurements of thickness of the macula this shows uh, the numerical levels of thickness here uh, different readings are coming here on this picture 
we do OCT in cases of glaucoma also and this measures the peripapillary retinal nerve fiber layer thickness this area peripapillary about uh, uh, 3.2 uh, millimeter area around the disc uh, it measures retinal nerve fiber layer thickness then it measures the optic disc cupping also and then here it gives rise to the value this is uh, the picture which uh, you know give rise to the uh, uh, optic disc cupping what is that cupping cupping see here it is coming into the green area so this is with a normal limit then there is a yellow line here so that is borderline and then this is red area if this uh, continuous black line come into this red red area it means there is increased disc cupping same is here in cases of retinal nerve fiber layer thickness if this complete black line come into this red area it means there is significant retinal nerve fiber layer uh, thickness reduction so these are the different indications uh, which we do uh, the um, uh, diagnose the macular lesions and to diagnose the glaucoma and we can also do this uh, uh, OCT in cases of as I told you earlier uh, to diagnose the angle closure glaucoma and we can do the pachymetry uh, before and after different kinds of refractive surgeries. The third investigation which we do is B scan ultrasonography uh, which we do uh, to diagnose the retinal pathologies in cases of hazy media or media obstructions like in cases of uh, corneal opacities in cases of cataract in cases of vitreous hemorrhage in where we cannot see the retina so we have to do this ultrasonography to diagnose the retinal pathologies so b scan is actually as a two dimensional ultrasound see here it it is two dimensional so we can see the length and we can see the height of the lens this is actually the B scan probe. Uh, this is of different megahertz to uh, cert like it is of uh, some uh, some probes are uh, used to do uh, diagnose the ocular pathologies, but we have to use a uh, different probes of longer wavelengths or longer uh, high megahertz values to diagnose the uh, orbital pathologies. So this is there is uh, this is actually high frequency sound waves which are produced by uh, piezoelectric crystals which are built in this uh, ultrasound probes which vibrates and they produce sounds and there is this sound then goes in and they produce echoes uh, between uh, different uh, acoustically different uh, structures okay so there is production of echoes between acoustically distinct structures so these echoes are then uh, uh, measured and calculated and they display different pictures which we by the help of which then we diagnose different ocular pathologies these indications are mainly in cases of vitreous hemorrhage as i told you earlier uh, we cannot assess the retina in cases of vitreous hemorrhage uh, even we we can diagnose vitreous hemorrhage if there is corneal opacity or if there is cataract and we can diagnose vitreoitis also we can uh, it is done to see look for the status of the retina like retinal detachment posterior vitreous detachment choroidal detachment it helps out in diagnosing the intraocular foreign bodies it helps out in diagnosing the ocular and the orbital tumor and it also it is also used in cases of carotid coenus fistula which give rise to the dilated superior ophthalmic vein See, this is uh, ultrasonography showing retinal detachment. This is the optic disc. So here the retina is attached. This is the vitreous cavity. And here the retina is lifted. So this is uh, like a funnel, open funnel. So the ret this is almost total retinal detachment. This is the retina. This is vitreous optic disc. And this one is then behind is the choroid and this hyperfluorescence uh, this one this is the whitish area is actually the orbital fat 
this is uh, the posterior witness detachment see here uh, it is not attached with the optic disc it is uh, away from the uh, optic disc uh, the retina is attached here this is a membrane which is uh, undulating membrane we see on ocular movements during ultrasonography okay so this is how we diagnose or differentiate between the uh, retinal, de retinal detachment and the posterior disc detachment retinal detachment there is uh, the retina is attached with the disc here this is totally away from the retina the retina is attached but this membrane now undulates it moves uh, with the it moves with the movement of the it moves with the ocular movements again we can diagnose uh, chronic uh, retinal detachment in which we see intraretinal cyst this is cyst see here the retina is detached this thick layer firm layer and within the retina this is cyst so this is a feature of long standing retinal detachment this is subretinal fluid this black area this is the vitreous now see this one is the choroidal detachment because here the retina is attached and this is interior to the uh, this is interior lens this is not the posterior lens uh, uh, so this is like uh, you know a moon shape area and uh, this is quite interior this is not posterior so this is the choroidal detachment and this so this uh, is the very important in this investigations uh, this b scan which we do to diagnose different retinal pathologies in cases of hazy medias but this choroidal detachment because this is usually interior so we have to do the b scan to diagnose this choroidal lens this finishes the topic of uh, main uh, ocular or uh, orbital investigations which we do uh, which we perform to diagnose different orbital or ocular pathologies thank you